Guys, welcome to part two of this video series where I want to discuss the importance of making the necessary drivetrain upgrades in order to run larger diameter off-road tires that we discussed in part one of this video series, which is how to build the ultimate Lexus GX470 off-road and overland rig for under 20 grand. In addition, I'll be discussing the types of armor that you should be choosing and some recovery equipment in case you get stuck out on the trail. Let's get started with a discussion of how to set up your drivetrain. Drivetrain components play a crucial role in off-road performance. A strong and reliable drivetrain is necessary to handle the torque and power required for traversing challenging terrain. This includes transmission, transfer case, differentials, drive shafts, and axles. These components work together to transfer power to the wheels and maintain traction, which is obviously essential for off-road driving. A failure in any of these components can result in a loss of power control, leading to a dangerous situation where help may be hours away. The the differential pinion and carrier bearings keep the differential gears aligned and reduce excess backlash. Over time and mileage, these preloads can get out of spec which can lead to breakages on the trail when a tire suddenly gets traction on a difficult obstacle. Getting these preloads put back in spec by a professional shop is highly recommended. While it's not necessarily a modification, this is something that I will strongly recommend, especially for the small 8 inch rear differential that we get in the Lexus GX470. If you're not upgrading your tire diameter more than a few percentage points larger than the stock 30.6 inches, you can pull the rear third member and send it to a differential shop for a pinion bearing and carrier bearing preload refresh while continuing to utilize a stock gear ratio of 3.73 to 1. If you're curious about it, a technician sets up the differential gear mesh to ensure the gears are properly aligned. They use a dial indicator to measure the runout of the ring gear and pinion gear. The runout should be within the manufacturer specifications once they're done adjusting them. If not, the pinion and carrier bearing preload must be adjusted correctly. In essence, if the preload's too high, the gears will be noisy and wear prematurely. If the preload is too low, the gears won't mesh properly and they'll also wear prematurely and cause that breakage potential I mentioned before. Now let's discuss the first drivetrain modification I recommend adding while the third member is getting worked on, a solid pinion spacer. A solid pinion spacer can help maintain this gear mesh over time and prevent the gears from walking out of specification as they're prone to do with the factory installed crush sleeve. The solid pinion spacer helps to keep the pinion gear in the correct position and maintains the preload set by the technician. This helps to ensure that the gear mesh remains consistent and that the gears do not wear prematurely but more importantly it prevents excessive backlash which leads to that sudden drivetrain shock on the trail when lots of throttle and large tires enter the equation. If you do up upgrade to tires that are more than just a few percentage points larger than stock, such as 35 inch tires for example, you must take the step of re-gearing or changing out your differential gears to a shorter gear ratio. Let me give you a quick illustration. If you've upgraded to larger diameter tires, you've essentially just made this hypothetical rear sprocket bigger without making a change to this one in the front, which is what the pedals are connected to, or in our case the engine. In turn, the man would be walking walking slower, which is analogous to your engine being in a lower RPM range. In order to return your engine to the optimal RPM range and reduce stress on the drivetrain, you need to expand the front sprocket as well to compensate for the additional rear sprocket diameter. I recommend actually exceeding the percentage change in diameter on that front sprocket to give your engine an extra torque advantage to turn those big tires and also haul all the excess weight common to overland rigs up steep winding roads on your way to the trails. It also has the added benefit of giving you a lower crawl ratio which improves your control over wheel speed on difficult obstacles. So what is the result? Our man would be walking faster than if we left it stock i.e. your RPMs will be slightly higher than stock. I'll make this very simple for you to assist in your search for a re-gear kit. 3.73 to 1 gears are the stock ratio. To illustrate what a gear ratio is, let's put the GX470 in fourth gear, which is a 1 to 1 ratio. That is, one turn of the engine equals one turn of the drive shafts. For the stock ratio, 3.73 turns of the engine slash drive shafts results in one turn of the wheels. That's like saying 3.73 rotations on the pedal on your bicycle results in one turn of the bike's tires. It's the same concept. Let's call those gears 373s, the stock ratio. With that in mind, 
what are the upgraded ratios for running larger diameter tires? Let's go over the common gears for the Toyota Lexus off-road platforms. You have 410s, 456s, 488s, and 529s. For the GX470, since it has plenty of low-down torque and only five speeds instead of six like the newer generation rigs, 529s are too short to consider in my opinion. The greater the number, the shorter the gearing, meaning the guy will be running faster on the chain, which translates to your RPMs being higher when you're on the highway, for example. Upgrading differential gears to a shorter ratio, say 488 to 1 like my rig currently is, can provide significant benefits in off-road contexts, especially with larger than stock tires. This is because the larger tires can decrease the vehicle's overall power and torque, making it harder to climb steep inclines or traverse challenging terrain. By installing shorter differential gears, the engine's power and torque can be better matched to the larger tires, resulting in improved acceleration and overall performance off-road and on-road. Additionally, shorter differential gears can help reduce strain on the drivetrain and improve fuel efficiency by allowing the engine to operate more efficiently within its power band. I did a comprehensive video on how to choose the ideal gear ratio for your weight, tire setup, on and off-road performance goals, etc. Personally, I went with 488 gears, which with my 34.7 inch tire diameter comes out to being about 16% shorter gear ratio than stock, which gives me the extra torque to handle the extra weight of my equipment and the increased leverage and unsprung rotational mass of running larger tires. Be sure to check out that video here for more details on what might work best for you. Now, given the inherent weakness of the Lexus GX470's 8-inch rear end, many opt to upgrade to the Lexus GX460 slash 5th Gen 4Runner type 8.2-inch rear differential axle assembly, which has been proven to be a more robust axle. The cost of doing this, however, has gone up significantly in recent days, and I decided to take my chances with the 8.0, knowing full well that it could one day let me down. In the future, however, I'm considering upgrading to either a 9.5-inch diamond axle or a good old Dana 60, which are very strong and can eliminate the worry of breaking the 8.0. All these options come at immense cost, to the point where the GX470 would be more of a custom and build and outside the realm of my ultimate every man's build video series concept. It's worth noting that I have taken my rig on some serious trails with mixed grip conditions and my drivetrain hasn't skipped a beat. This is because more often than not I don't need to use wheel speed to get through these obstacles because of the next drivetrain modification, differential lockers. If as mentioned in part one, upgraded tires are the most beneficial to off-road performance Then differential lockers follow in a close second place. Differential lockers are devices that lock the differential gears together, forcing both wheels on the axle to turn at the same speed regardless of traction. This allows both wheels to receive equal torque, which maximizes the vehicle's off-road performance by preventing wheels from spinning uselessly and creating dangerous conditions that can result in breakages. In a non-locking differential, power is directed to the wheel with the least amount of resistance, which can cause the vehicle to become stuck if one loses traction. With a locker engaged, power is distributed evenly to both wheels, providing greater traction and control in challenging off-road terrain. The Lexus GX470 has a locking center differential from the factory, which prevents this free spinning through the transfer case from the front to the rear axle, but wheels can still lose traction from the left to the right side because you have open differentials on the front and the rear axle. So having differential lockers not only in the transfer case but also in the front differential and rear differential can ensure that the vehicle when fully locked can make the absolute most out of the available traction. I can personally attest to the immense capability of having a triple locked Lexus GX470. The difference in capability from my differentials going from unlocked to lock is astonishing. Even just having the capability to lock the front differential when locking the rear didn't do the trick is another level of off-road capability than just having the rear locker available. Having a fully 
fully locked setup allows you to take things slow and can be another way to reduce the likelihood of sustaining drivetrain damage on the trail by keeping wheel speed under control. So let's talk about a couple points on drivetrain maintenance. The very first DIY job I did on my Lexus GX470 was replacing the transfer case actuator o-ring that commonly leaks on these vehicles. From then on, I've been striving to ensure that my drivetrain is properly maintained with fresh fluid, brand new gears, and a ratio that best matches my tire size and vehicle weight, brand new 5th generation 4Runner CV axles, which have a better axle boot design than the GX471, which is prone to tearing, and doing regular inspections, including filling the drive shafts with grease. This allows the drive shafts to telescope in and out without binding, which the GX470 stock drive shafts can be prone to doing. Now let's talk about armor. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Whoa. Uh, I think, there's, a oh. I think <laughs> there's something underneath that vehicle. Oh, I hope it's okay. <laughs> oh. No, 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 no. Are we gonna roll down this hill mm. right now? Well, I guess we're about to do that. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, good. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. You're, you're dropping here, okay? Yeah. You're good. Oh. All the way back. Armor is essential for protecting your vehicle from damage when off-roading. Rocks, branches, tree stumps, and other obstacles can cause serious damage to components underneath the vehicle, like critical drivetrain parts, suspension parts, and also the vehicle body itself. Skid plates, rock sliders, and other armor, like front and rear steel or aluminum bumpers, can help prevent this damage and keep you going on the trail. Without proper armor, you risk getting stuck or even causing permanent damage damage to your vehicle. It's important to invest in quality armor that is designed specifically for your vehicle and the type of off-roading you'll be doing. In an off-road context, it's recommended to replace the weak stock skid plates with stronger aftermarket ones, including the front, transmission, and transfer case skids. Additionally, it's beneficial to add armor for the gas tank, lower control arm mounts, and rocker panels, which are protected by rock sliders. This helps protect the vehicle from damage while navigating rocky and uneven terrain. Front skids are designed to protect the engine, oil pan, front differential mount, and other critical components located under the front of the vehicle from damage on rough terrain. And speaking of the front differential mount, I'm talking about the one that's over on the passenger side. You guys, while I was getting my re-gear and lockers put in, I had the shop put in the updated part for this front differential mount. The one from the 2003 to early 2005 models is too brittle and people have had issues where these things snap when they're pushing them hard off road and they can end up wreaking havoc under the vehicle, tearing CV boots, and even one of our GXOR members punctured his oil pan while he was out on a tough trail. And I just wanna make this PSA so that everybody knows before you go hard wheeling, with your Lexus GX470 from 2003 to the first half of 2005 builds, make sure you have the late 2005 and on passenger side front differential mount. Go ahead and put that one on your modifications list. Okay, let's get back to the conversation about armor. Upgrading to a thicker and stronger front skid plate can provide additional protection and prevent costly damage. Upgrading transmission, transfer case, and gas tank skids also serves a similar purpose. Protecting these vital components from damage damage that can be caused by rocks or other obstacles on the trail can prevent costly repairs and help ensure that the vehicle is able to continue functioning properly, especially when you're hours away from any help. Rock sliders help prevent damage to the vehicle's rocker panels and lower body from rocks, stumps, and other obstacles encountered when off-road. I recently did a video showing why the rear lower control arm, also referred to as link mounts, desperately needs skid plates before attempting to hit any serious rocky obstacles. I managed to absolutely mangle mine, requiring help from Boris over at Restless Off-Road to straighten them out and weld over a quality set of I'm Keith 
lower link mount skid plates. Be sure to check out that video after this one as well. Upgrading to aftermarket steel or aluminum bumpers in an off-road context can provide several benefits. These bumpers are typically stronger and more durable than the factory bumpers, which can provide better protection for the vehicle in case of a collision or impact with obstacles on the trail. They also have built-in recovery points and winch mounts, which can make it easier and safer to recover the vehicle in difficult situations. Rear aftermarket bumpers usually have a mount for a spare tire swing out, which is also a huge benefit since oversized tires do not fit in the stock location under the cargo area. Additionally, they often provide better approach and departure angles, allowing the vehicle to navigate more challenging terrain without getting stuck or damaged. I personally just cut my stock rear bumper for clearance and added a restless off-road tire swing out directly into the frame. This was to save weight and cost. I didn't feel it was necessary to upgrade to a full after market rear bumper because I already have a robust hitch which acts very well as both armor and a rear recovery point. I smash that thing on rocks all the time you guys. It's held up great. When it comes to the benefits and trade-offs of choosing between steel and aluminum aftermarket skid plates and bumpers there's several factors to consider. Steel skid plates are generally stronger and more durable than aluminum ones making them a better choice for serious off-roading or for vehicles that see a lot of abuse. They can also be less expensive than aluminum skid plates. On the other hand, aluminum skid plates are lighter and more corrosion resistant than steel skid plates, making them a good choice for vehicles that are primarily used for overlanding. Aluminum plates with additional compensatory thickness like the RCI ones can be good for serious rock crawling as well, but they may have to be replaced more often and as I've heard from many other users, they don't slide across rocks as well, instead they tend to grip up, so you may get stuck on your belly more often in for that reason. However, they can offer that better efficiency due to the light weight versus steel skids. So I think they're a good buy if you only hit tough trails occasionally and aren't planning on dragging your rig over rocks very often. Ultimately, the choice between steel and aluminum skid plates will depend on the specific needs and intended use of the vehicle owner. As I've said, I've learned the hard way how necessary skid plates like the lower link mount skids are, but I've also been smart and planned ahead and saved myself a lot of headaches as well. Before the rock crawling trip that damaged my lower link mounts, I had upgraded from the relatively thin ARB skid plates to some serious RCI steel skid plates, which have maximum coverage of the bottom of my rig. This included an upgraded gas tank skid, which I was previously on the fence about. Well, let's just say I'd be needing a new gas tank if I didn't have that one. This type of setup may not be necessary for everyone though. For the most part, a simple kit upgrading the factory skid plates is enough, but for the added peace of mind, I recommend going overkill on the armor. You never know what kind of situations you'll encounter on the trail, which is part of the reason it's so fun to go out and explore. Doing so without being worried about destroying the vehicle is a huge plus in my opinion. Okay you guys, that's all the time I have for today's video. I was going to include recovery gear in this video, but it'll have to wait until the next one. I wanted to really make sure I gave you all the information on drivetrain upgrades and armor, so we'll let this one serve as as a comprehensive video for those two items. We're gonna keep going with the ultimate Everyman's Lexus GX470 build in the next part of this series. We'll see you in the next video.